Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today marks the day of a very exciting graphics card launch from NVIDIA. We have a single graphics card that we are running with right now that is capable of driving this 1080p 27 inch display at well over 60 frames per second. This is with ultra detail settings in Battlefield 3, so four time multi sampling anti aliasing, as well as 16 times anisotropic filtering. As you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful. We've got all of the reflections on, everything running full bore. This is on a stock clocked GTX 680. This is a two gig graphics card. Unfortunately, no, it won't make it so that you never die in games, but it'll at least give you the best possible weapon for your best fighting chance. Stay tuned to learn more. Now the 680 is a thing of beauty, both physically as well as in terms of the technology. It uses a single fan uh, dual slot cooler that expels the air from the back of the card, which means that it doesn't linger around in your case. It has its two six pin PCI Express power connectors stacked together for better cable management inside your case, albeit very minorly better cable management. It uses the latest manufacturing process that is 28 nanometers to achieve significantly better performance per watt as well as heat output compared to previous generation products. And it has all the latest technologies including PCI Express 3.0, support for up to four way SLI, as well as support for three plus one displays in NVIDIA 3D Vision surround. So that's three three displays with 3D Vision Gaming, and then one auxiliary display that you can use in addition to that. Now let's talk about GPU Boost. GPU Boost is a completely new way that NVIDIA is setting the default clock speeds of their graphics cards. Kind of like Intel Turbo Boost, there is a default clock speed, and then, assuming that the chip has enough cooling and has enough overhead in terms of the power design that it is designed to run within, it will actually turn its own clock speed up as much as five to 10%. So that means that in games that or applications that are less demanding on your GPU, where you're not pulling as much power from it, it'll turn its own clock speed up to give you the most FPS all the time. So it's power on demand. Now let's talk some of the other technology that has been built into the GTX 680. This will be the last technology shot and then I'm going to get to the performance numbers you guys. So number one is the fact that compared to its closest competitor from the red team, it consumes up to 50 watts less power under load. Also, NVIDIA has added FXAA, which I sort of call fast anti-aliasing. It's a faster but less accurate mode of anti-aliasing that still looks really good to the NVIDIA control panel, meaning that you can force it in games that don't even officially support it. Next, we've got adaptive VSync. Adaptive VSync gives you the benefit of VSync, which is a lack of tearing when it's rendering one frame, half of a frame on one top part of the monitor and half of the frame on the other. They don't match up with the benefits of not having VSync, which is that when your frame rate dips from 60 FPS down to 58 FPS, VSync has to turn you all the way down to a multiple of 60, that is 30 or 20, in order to run correctly. So that's devastating to your frame rate. You'd rather have 58. It'll turn VSync off if you dip below 60 and turn it on if you hit 60, making it for a smoother overall gaming experience. Now I mentioned three plus one monitors, but we also get support for 4K monitors, that is higher resolution monitors. So if you're, well, they're not available yet, but who knows, by the time you watch this video, they might be, and you can grab a GTX 680 in order to make use of it. Finally, they've got their NVENC, which is video encoding hardware that is built directly into the card, and TXAA modes one and two, which cost less in terms of the performance hit compared to traditional MSAA. So mode one is about like two times AA in terms of the performance hit, but looks like eight times AA, whereas mode two costs as much as four times AA and looks even better than mode one. Now there's no question that the question in everyone's mind is what performs better, the GTX 680 or the Radeon HD 7970. At the time of filming, they're a similar price and similar positioning within the market within their respective product stacks at NVIDIA and AMD. And the answer is a resounding GTX 680. Now, 
it is not only a better performer, but it is also more feature complete because Radeon HD 7970 always had that iFinity checkbox where you could run multiple monitors off a single card. Now Nvidia has seen that feature and I would say even beat it with their easily utilized, well-implemented 3D vision technology. So you have not only multiple displays, but you can do it in stereoscopic 3D. And if you are gonna run stereoscopic 3D, do yourself a favor, get a monitor with light boost because it makes all the difference in the world. It is for me, the difference between having a headache and having a great 3D gaming experience. So now let's talk performance numbers. These were all painstakingly collected by me and I apologize for not turning them into wonderful graphs, but honestly, it's uh, 840 the, the day before launch, and I'm very, very tired from being up almost all night doing this stuff. These are run-throughs of the games Battlefield 3, Crisis 2, The Witcher 2, and Skyrim, The Elder Scrolls. And finally, Dirt 3 and Batman Arkham City are using the built-in benchmarks. I have also overclocked the 7970 to the maximum available within Catalyst Control Center, and the GTX 680 at about plus 143 megahertz on its built-in GPU boost. Uh, tool that is an EVGA precision. So guys, these are run-throughs with them on ultra settings, four times anti-aliasing, and eight times anisotropic filtering across the board. I have maxed these games out at 1080p. You can also see I've collected idle power, so that is how much power is drawn from the wall, with my 3930K, that is a six core test bench with 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD boot drive. And then I have also collected both power and temperature readings at all of the various games, because I think this gives a better picture than benchmarking with something like Furmark, which is an artificial scenario. So we're looking at what kind of temps and power you're gonna get in real games, plus or minus a little bit, because you're probably gonna put your card in a case. So you've got it compared against all of the relevant GPUs that are positioned around it in last generation, as well as a head-to-head -head between the 7970 and the GTX 680 overclocked to the max. So you guys can check out some of my other coverage on my Linus Tech Tips channel where I'm gonna be looking at things like acoustic comparisons with the microphone on my camera, among other things. But I think this should give you a pretty good idea. So whether you're overclocking or whether you're running at stock speed, the GTX 680 really knocks it out of the park. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips and don't forget to subscribe.